Hello and welcome to RF Design Tutorials, a place where we talk about practical design aspects regarding RF circuits. This is tutorial 4 and in this tutorial we will talk about simulating defected ground structures or DGS using the ARIAS software. Now, DGS is a very common technique and it has many advantages over competing technologies such as uh, photonic band gap which is PBG or electronic band gap which is um, you know EBG. Um, the main thing about DGS is almost everyone who is involved with RF circuit design can utilize it because it's very easy to fabricate, easy to print and doesn't cost you a whole lot of money. Now in this tutorial we will learn how to define the setup for DGS kind of structures how to create and simulate DGS based layouts in areas. Derived layer concept, which is a very important one if you want to go deep into DGS based design and you will learn how easy your job becomes once you start using derived layer concept. And it's only one time effort to set up your stack up with a simple you know, couple of clicks and you're all set to, to run your you know, parametric kind of you know, DGS structures and, and perform various EM simulations very, very easily. Now, if, you are, if you're new to DGS and you want to learn about DGS going through the fundamentals, I found this uh, you know, wonderful you know, paper uh, talking about the fundamentals of DGS. So I'll post this link in the description box below the video. So be sure to check it out if you're interested in working with DGS um, you know, structures, whether ADS or using any other you know, software of your choice. Right, before we get started, as always, subscribe to my channel. Once you subscribe, click on the bell icon to enable all the notification. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Click the share button to share with your friends and colleagues who may be interested in watching you know, similar tutorial. Now let's go and learn about these topics. So first, let's see how can we do stack up for DGS kind of structure. Now stack up creation for DGS kind of design is not difficult. In some of the previous videos, we already talked about this. But just for a reference checking again, so any DGS structure cannot use um, you know an ideal cover plate at the bottom. You at least need to have a two-layer you know material defined here. As you can see, I have a con layer defined, which is I'm going to use it for my signal you know layer design, and then I have a con two mapping, which is going to be my ground layer for anything which I draw in con. So that will be my ground reference. So while working with DGS, anything or any specific shape, um, you know, I want to draw, I will do using con layer. So this fundamental remains the same. So I already have the con mapping. I have assigned the right material for right thing. For example, in dielectric, I'm using a 10 mil FR4, and then for con, I'm using copper, and assign a particular thickness. So this much effort is is done. So that's how you set up your stack up for a regular DGS uh, kind of structure. Now in terms of layout, uh, before we talk about DGS layout, let me just talk about a normal layout. So here I do have a transmission line drawn on con layer. It's a simple kind of trace, you know, going from input to output. And I do have a fully featured ground, which is in this case a perfect ground because I just want to start from here. And this ground, uh, you know, is based on con layer, uh, con two layer. And in my port assignment, uh, I have declared pin one, which is connected at the input here, is going to refer ground in con two layer. Similarly, pin two, which is connected on the other side, is going to refer ground here. So this way, uh, if you remember my uh, EM simulation of Gerber files video, uh, you don't need to explicitly place the minus pin. So the ADS will make your job automatic by this approach. Now, once we go ahead and simulate it using momentum from DC to 10 gigahertz, as you would expect, you have a pre-transmission line looking response with decreasing uh, or having more insertion loss versus frequency. And you have a very decent looking, you know, uh, return loss across the frequency band. So everything is good. So that's the start place. Now for defected ground, essentially what is meant is we need to create a defect in the ground and again, here I have the layout and here I created a void in the con2. Now the question is how do I create this void? I, how can I manipulate this kind of ground defect? How, what kind of shapes I can create? So just to illustrate that concept, uh, what I have done here, I selected con2 layer and I drew the amount of ground I want in my structure. And now 
I need to use any layer from the list of available layers. Now, if you don't see this layer window, you can just right click anywhere on this toolbar area and switch on the layers window. And that's how you will see all these layer window here coming up. Okay, so now I can pick any other layer, for example, raise or dial anything which I have not used. And I can use these primitive ADS commands to draw any shape I want. For example, if I want to create something like this, or if I want to create a dumbbell kind of structure, I could create, you know, something like this. So, and you, you can use coordinate entry command to enter it, you know, desired specific information or the coordinates. Or alternatively, if you already have a DXF file containing the shape of the defect which you which you want to create, you can just go ahead and do the file import and select DXF or DWG file or a Gerber file to import that, and then we can use it here. Now, once you have these overlapping conductors, I can go ahead and just select both of them, go to Edit, Boolean Logical, and here I will use my master as con2 and I will select the action to be difference and the target layer is RACI and the result will go back to CON2. So CON2 minus RACI, the result goes back to CON2, simple logic. Now I would definitely want to delete the CON2 because I don't want to retain the whole you know, filled ground shape, but I may want to retain this RACI because later I may want to change the dimension of this um, you know, area and I may want to redo this Boolean operation. So I will not delete the RACI structure. And I'm going to apply this to selected object and here I've already selected. Otherwise, you can go ahead and select all objects. It's your choice. Once you click OK, you can notice, and if I switch off the RACI layer here, you can notice the void gets created in the ground and that's precisely what I've done here. So not too complicated, very, very simple. The rest of the stuff remains the same. For example, I do have the, um, you know, the port defined and they're all referring to CON2. And when I go ahead and simulate this structure with a simple momentum you know, simulation, or you could pick you know, FEM if you're um, you know, trying to work with FEM. So let me go ahead and delete this structure from here. Now, as you can see, momentum runs extremely quick and here's the response. Now, simple transmission line response. So let me go ahead and bring you know, what a transmission line response was showing. And let's plot S21 of that. So a simple transmission line response, which is almost like a straight line, gets converted to a low pass filter. That's the beauty of DGS, right? So that's how we use. So again, you know, the applications of DGS is into creating low pass filters, pan stop filters, antennas, and even pan pass filters people have created using DGS, you know, concept. So that's how you get started with doing something basic. Now, just to show you a bit of variant of DGS, um, because a lot of people are interested in doing fractal kind of DGS. So here I do have a layout and you can notice if I switch off the RACI layer, I have the void in my layout, which is like fractal kind of shape. And the, the way I'm drawing that is I have this RACI layer. So this is the shapes uh, which I used at normal ADS polygon to just draw basic primitive shapes here. And I just use the same Boolean technique which we talked about earlier. And now once we go ahead and simulate this structure, you know, it will have a similar low pass looking filter response. However, the interesting thing would be, and you can see what it, notice the simulation being run in the background at various frequency sample points, and we are going to have the final response. Once the simulation finishes, um, you know, another interesting aspect to look in these kind of design is to look at the field visualization. So if I launch visualization window, and it's a very interesting concept to, to look at how the you know, current flows in a standard line versus defected line, because the way the behind the scene action is happening, because in a default, like a solid ground plane, your return path is right underneath your transmission line of the structure because this current follows the least um, resistance path. And that's what's happening. But when you create these kind of voids, what's happening, you're forcing current, and let me enable the arrows and animate it. And let's plot the dB scale. And let me reduce the arrow size a little bit. So now you see what's happening till this point here, the current is following, but then current has no way to go here because you have a void in between. 
let me just artificially stretch it in Z scale so that you can see it better. Right, so now current has no way to go in this direction, right? So we are forcing this current to take a loop and this creates a loop inductance um, and creates a giving rise to, you know, inductance uh, parameter. And also these voids have certain capacitive actions. So basically it creates an LC, you know, kind of structure along the line. And the shape of this deformity or the defect ground plane controls that inductance value and the capacitance value. That's how the whole concept works. But again, refer to the, the reference um, you know, tutorial I talked about earlier, and you can watch the link in the tutorial box and the description box below this video. Now, every time if you have to do this manual Boolean operation, it's, it's going to be difficult because the other thing you also need to remember is when you do this, you know, how the structure you know, gets parameterized because when you have DGS and when you Boolean out, this positive picture goes away, right? Or the positive, uh, you know, structure which you are going to use um, goes away. And it's very difficult to keep track of how to modify some of these extents or you want to parameterize an EM um, using the videos I showed you earlier. So here we come to a very important concept called derived layer. Now derived layer, if you notice this layout, what happens here? I have a cond structure, which is currently a full solid you know, ground plane. And what I have drawn here is the racy layer and I haven't performed the Boolean operation. However, if I look at the 3D EM preview, this is how exactly your EM simulator is going to see your geometry. Notice what the EM simulator sees behind the scene, right? It sees the defected structure, but in our layout, we have a full solid ground but the EM simulator is seeing this defective structure automatically. Well, is it a magic? The answer is no. We are using derived layer concept in areas, which makes your job very, very simple. That means you can play with these uh, shapes and all these Boolean operations will keep happening when you run an EM simulation automatically behind the scene. So let's quickly understand how can we do that. So we go to options, technology, layer definition, in this layer definition and the layer tab, I can add a normal layer. Like if I want to have my own custom layers, I can go ahead and add a layer and we can give it a name, uh, whatever I want. Say my layer, you can define the role of that layer, whether it's going to be used as conductor or via and so on and so forth. And then whatever display property you want to set, you can set here. What color of the layer you want, how much transparency and all that. That's a regular a layer addition. However, here we have a derived layer. Once we add derived layer, as the name is suggesting, it can be derived by certain operation on certain layers. For example, here I can add a layer, say my DGS, and I can choose the operation, what happens. So I would like to perform a Boolean operation, but you also have some sizing operation of growing something, shrinking something, and so on but here I'll just stick to Boolean and I can choose the same thing like we did. So we have a difference. We want con2 to be minus with Racy, and that's how the structure. So now what happens when I add it here, my DGS layer, this layer has to be mapped into the dielectric. So if you notice, I have a dielectric here or to DGS and in this dielectric, I have instead of mapping con2, I just map DGS G and D here. So now my layout will be on CON2, but for my EM simulation, um, I would use DGS, which is going to do that Boolean operation automatically behind the scene. And when we run the simulation, you expect the similar looking response. And here is the response for automatic DGS. And if you want to compare it with, with the regular manual DGS, I can just switch on and you can see it's exactly the same response. And you can see that if I put on history. So currently this is my manual fractal DGS structure. And now if I go to auto DGS structure, uh, sorry, no, this is the basic. If I go to auto uh, DGS momentum, you can see the performance is exactly the same between auto as well as the, the fractal DGS. So there's no performance change because it's just about handling the Boolean operation behind the scene. 
So that's all what I wanted to present in this video. Hope you like the content presented. And if you're working with TGS kind of structures, you just saw how easy it is to manipulate all these TGS geometries into ADS. And using derived layer concept, you can completely automate and take away the pain of you doing manual, you know, Boolean all the times, um, very similar to other tools where you end up performing all these Boolean operations manually all the time. Well, ADS makes your life easy to go ahead and design. Again, subscribe to my channel for more such interesting tutorial videos and have a good time ahead. Thanks a lot for watching.